and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. NEPCO is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. NEPCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEPCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? Book clubs and quilting clubs? Nah, forget that. How about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs? Get to Upside Bar and Lounge for the best clubs in town. Try all 10 varieties of Upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass. Grab the whole crew and pair it with Taco Night on Mondays or Whiskey Wednesdays. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Treads Central Tire Pros just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through April 14th, enjoy USDA Choice Flat Iron Steaks for $9.99 per pound, all natural, boneless, skinless chicken breasts for $2.98 per pound, Duroc Pork Tenderloin for $3.99 per pound, and four ounce lobster tails for $6.99 each. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Bagels and Joe is the perfect place for breakfast or lunch in April. Try their brand new cake batter cream cheese on any breakfast sandwich. And try the caramel latte as 10% of proceeds from that drink will go to the Foundation for Lincoln Public Schools. Four locations in Lincoln and one in Seward, Bagels and Joe. One action, no matter how small, can have a world of impact on the life of a child. Cedar started because one couple believed that they could provide a child with a better life. And that belief grew into the Cedars that we know today, a powerful force for good that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. Lincoln. You wanted more sweet and spice in your life, and now you've got it. At Wings and Rings, their brand new hot honey has all of Lincoln buzzing. Try their one-of-a-kind house-made sauce on the brand new hot honey chicken sandwich or their hot honey shrimp and slaw. And of course you can get it on the traditional, boneless, or smoked wings that have made Wings and Rings your go-to neighborhood spot. Hot honey was supposed to be gone on April 1st, but they're extending it indefinitely. So stop by Wings and Rings at one of their two Lincoln locations today on O Street and on Village Lane. With the Planet Fitness Black Card, you don't just get a great workout, you get a great perk out because your membership is packed with perks. For $1 down and $24.99 a month, you'll get perks like access to any of our 2,400 clean and spacious locations. Bring your friend anytime and both work out with tons of equipment that'll give you that big fitness energy. Relax in the Black Card Spa and more. Work out and perk out with the PF Black Card. Join for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Hurry, this deal ends soon. See home club for details. Welcome to The Drive with A.D. Raff and Amon Gray. Former Husker football national champion, speaker, and author, Aaron Davis. Nebraska will win the national championship. The Cornhuskers beat Miami. It is history. 13-0. 
and bring that trophy back to Lakers. Former Arena Football League quarterback, former head coach of the Capital City Crush, and guru of Husker football history, Chris Rath. 25 straight wins for the Cornhuskers. One of the most dominating stretches in college football history. We may have seen one of the best teams in the history of college football tonight. 12-year NFL veteran. He's got some speed to go with strength. Huskers and Green Bay Packers Hall of Famer. Shovel pass to Green into Vikings territory. Finally brought down. And University of Nebraska eSports coach Amon Green. Look at Green all by himself. 20, 10, touchdown. Brought to you by Sand Hills Global on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, everybody, we are back again. This is The Drive on 93.7 The Ticket. It is Monday. It is beautiful. Ha! Oh, what a Loving weekend. AG it. back in the house. Yep. Tell us about your weekend. Where have you been, AG? Oh, man, we uh, drove out to Columbus, Ohio for the big <laughs> esports conference, or as we've offic- unofficially can't, you know, we can't add in the 10, but it was the Big 10 esports conference tournament. And uh, we are... Super Smash Brother players, uh, Tate, Christian, Sky, uh, Skyler, Max, and I know I'm always always from one more in there. They uh, said, "Home run!" I go, "You better say my name, Amon. You better say I my got, name." I know. Oh man, it'll come back. I know it's more. It's one more in there. I said Christian. Yeah, and Eric is our team manager, and then we had Z, our president, club president, myself, and Coach Ryan Tan in there. Sam with production and also Jay that also worked with production to get some shots for social media that we'll put out this week. But the Smash players, yeah, they qualified. And uh, Sky- Skyler, that was the other player, played well. Um, we beat some teams. You know, we played. They had pool play. So we finished third in the pool play, came out, and then got one or two wins, but then came out, came a little short of going to semis. But we have a squad of Skyler being a senior, Eric, Team manager being a senior and then sophomores and freshmen. So for having them there, nice. their freshman year and junior and a, and a sophomore year, and then say, so we got them for the next couple of years. That's a big deal for them. And I told them that once we got back off the road last night, we got we got here. Sun was still up around eight o'clock, and I, I told them, say, hey, um, I know we didn't get all the way to where we wanted to get, but getting here now, we're just one step closer. And then what we got to do, continue. So everything you did to do, basically to get here. Rinse and repeat, and then we talked about things that we need to work on. Yep. Um, after after we found out we didn't make it to the semis on Saturday, that was okay. So we said, all right, we got to do this. We got we got about three or four things that we got to do. Starting with the first thing, which is going to be watch a little bit more film on ourselves and on uh, our opponents, and that's something that kind of a thorn in my side in esports. There's a, not a lot of film sharing among <laughs> universities and teams. Yeah, old school. <laughs> and it drives in the football film. Right. And I'm like, oh, this drives me nuts. So we got to have a player, director like myself, scavenge the internet for if we know the opponent's name and team, we got to find some clips. We got to literally be like Sherlock Holmes and you know, go go sniff out something and uh, get film up so we can do, watch so, it and do break it down. A lot of the players have, they have their own channels, right? Um, yeah, we, uh, they don't have to, they, um, but, we, but we find the players. search we, their channel. Yeah, we have a few of the Cub players, our varsity players that have personality and that want to stream. And so we're getting them ready for this summer. We'll have uh, players from the Valorant team, Smash team, Overwatch, Call of Duty, and then we have Apex, Rainbow Six Siege, Mario Kart players that that want to stream. And a lot of them do, um, but they don't stream frequently because of class right now. But once the summer hit, we can start doing that. Um, getting And then we, it's on the idea list and plan list for, for the summer this year to get players from our esports club. Continue to spread the word. I'm going to be in the rotation as well jumping on once a week. Um, but the, the beautiful thing was I had never been to uh, Columbus, and it was a good vibe there. I was, I was just talking to uh, Josh about it, and wow. And the uh, eSports facility they have, hey, I'm going to be talking to Troy Dannon tomorrow. So I'm like, hey, we got, <laughs> we got some work to do. What up, TD? And what I've noticed about eSports facilities on campuses, then they have a partner off campus. And this is something I've also been working on here in uh, Lincoln too. So they have a place on campus. This one was located in one of the dorm rooms at the bottom level. So basically at the entry level, when you go up for elevator to all your rooms, but the first floor had 60 to 70 gaming PCs, a shout casting or production room, kind of like this for podcasts and streaming. And 
And then they had a co- their coach's offices and director office all there. And I'm just like, wow. It's like, yeah. So when I talked to Troy, I put that on the list. Talked to Minnesota's coach, Doug. Um, can't think of his last name right now, but first name is Doug. And he has the Minnesota Gophers esports program. And I think he's one of very few Big Ten and D1 schools that has it in, has their program in the athletic department, in athletics. So they're covered. That's and they got, they, they got all the support they need to function yeah. as a program and travel and everything and practice and having the equipment and doing what they need to do to hear that from them. It's like, okay, you give me ammunition. <laughs> so go. when I come back yeah. to campus and uh, talk to my uh, higher ups, they're like, hey, this is what we got to do. We, we want to compete. We want to win these tournaments. We want to be in the run running. And right now our players are, we're behind the eight ball. So we got to get them caught up. So then you said that this was sort of like the big tens, you know, like this past weekend. Yep. Is there like a national tournament then, or is there one that's held, or is it just kind of just a mix of different tournaments? Or is no, it-, it is a national one coming up in May. We call it we since this is this just passed was uh, April and um, April, you know, college basketball madness, March madness. We they've coined it. I'll say we coined it. It was a, it's a company out of Connecticut that called CMSG and or CES, CSMG. One of the one of the, I know it's those letters, and they started last year. And so they have the CECC, the College Esports Commissioners Cup, down in Arlington, Texas, at the Esports Arena, just a few blocks away from Jerry's World, um, down there in Arlington, Texas. So we play there. So if we would have won this one, so the team that won was Michigan State for Smash, and they, they won one other game was either Overwatch or Valorant, and qualify for that as well. So if they they win the conference tournament, and you get qualified boom, for that. They qualify for the CEC um, here at the first month, uh, first weekend here in May, May second through the fourth, basically down there so i'm gonna be down there as a coach go spectate you know watch talk to the other coaches that are there because they get coaches from boise state's going to be there doc haskell maryville who which is also kansas or iowa somewhere very good school um syracuse and northwoods just the top liners of of of, of the colleges that are be talking football the alabama's georgia's um, you ohio states of the world you know the guys the teams that have the best teams they're winning a lot and they have a programs that's been well established over the last 10 years awesome awesome josh what'd you do this weekend anything fun and exciting let's see i actually went back to illinois Ooh, hello nice. went to illinois state visited a good friend of mine okay um it was cool you know him and his buddies play on the hockey team there so you know we got to get up and down the rink at the park did some roller hockey and learned that i still cannot rollerblade i should just stay on the ice i took <laughs> a little too many falls but it was good travels so do they, do they have the caleb williams billboards hung up yet or? <laughs> no no i i think a good chunk of illinois i don't know if they're ready for him i think we're all still a little hurt by justin fields being traded away but you know what we trust management at this point in my opinion you do yes i do oh the player movement the coaching hires not totally but i trust ryan poles and you know what, what's meant to be is, is meant to be. And that's kind of where I'm at. So, <laughs> yeah. And so did Russell get dropped? What's up? Is Russell still out in Pittsburgh? Cause oh, I saw, he's still there. Yeah, he's, he's still there. there. I saw, cause I, it must've been fake news tweet or something. I saw it out there. And no. I'm like, what? The? No, no I'm Russ like, is... didn't they just, I was like, he didn't even get to mini camp. Russ but, okay, is there. It was fake Russ news. Is there. Yep. Fake, it was fake, fake news. news. I saw this on my, it was either Instagram or uh, Facebook. And I'm like, I'm not, I, even, I even went to ESPN and didn't see nothing, but I was like, let me confirm this when I talk to the guys on Monday. I'm like, something ain't right here. Yeah, no, Russ, Russ is there. Actually, they um, a lot of the teams are reporting for um, – Pre-draft minicamp? Yeah, what is it, the non-mandatory? What is that word for non-mandatory? Is voluntary. That? Voluntary, yep. Yeah. I saw that – Voluntary, um, not voluntary? Voluntary, yep. not voluntary? Yeah. Yep, non. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you don't have to be there, but it would be nice if we see you. It's funny because – I always laugh with Aaron Rodgers. He never showed up to these camps when he right, played for Green Bay. It was like summer golf, you know, and then and that's like most every every player in the NFL or not every like star quarterback in the NFL. Usually they this is kind of one they sit out. But yeah, I saw that Aaron Rodgers was rolling into New York today to participate in the. And the mini cab that's coming up. So I'm assuming it's probably two or three days, I'm guessing. So, yeah, yeah. You just have to imagine for him, though. I mean, going down, not even 10 snaps in your first game with a new team. And, and that, just, it's just, it kind of is unfair for him. So you have to imagine just the amount of work he's put in the offseason, that drive to get back to just even play one quarter of right. a season. And that's why he's there because he didn't have that full season. So he's like, you know what? 
I, you know, if he didn't have a full season under his belt, he would not be there. So him being gone all the season of the season where they thought they were going to be, that was going to be their year out there. So let him come, you know, he's like, it's a good decision to be there. So he can uh, get the worry out of him on his own self of, but you know, can I do this? Is my foot okay? The ankle okay? The Achilles okay? And then obviously the team can see it yep. and know the money that they spent is going to be eventually um, it'll, it'll get their ROI. You know, once the season starts and training camp and all that fun stuff, which the healthy, I already know it's gonna be it's gonna be a problem in in, in an AFC East <laughs> for oh, yeah. for any other team. And when he's healthy and that team plays the way they do with the run game and the defense they have, so um, and Robert Sala, the coach, I know very well. He was down in Houston with me, so he's a guy that he learned. Um, he's tedious. He sticks to the details, and and, and I always liked, and I I, I kind of felt it when I met him, and he was around him for a couple years. A couple years, I didn't realize that he was gonna be that guy that keeps receipts because he said that, and I was like, <laughs> I'm not surprised. I was like, yeah, yeah, you want to take take a tally of who doubts you or who questions you because he he seemed like the guy. He's like, I want to prove you wrong. Yeah, so. Coach Rob, <laughs> you know, he's I feel like he's one of those coaches that can really win a locker room over a guy like Dan Campbell at Detroit that just rallies yeah. the city around a yep, team yep. that's just been struggling year after year. So I'm excited to see what they do, especially with the Bills, you know, slowly declining over the past few years. That it might be might be Jets time. Jets time. Jets well, time. Go Let, let's not go. Let's not go. <laughs> Did, so I, I've been curious about this for um the last couple of weeks, I want to know what Aaron Rodgers spent his $81.14 on that he made on the performance-based pay from last year. <laughs> well, what, what did he spend it on? Well, I'm, just, it on? I'm just curious. I well, mean, that, that made news that it, they had that the NFL performance-based pay. Play. Yeah, yeah. I remember mm -hmm. that when it started. So it he play, plays one play and gets $81. They sent him a check for $81.14. That's a dinner somewhere in New York. Maybe just the appetizer. Yeah, I was gonna restaurant. say. Do you think? Do you think Aaron Rodgers actually pays in New York? Though I gotta think that everywhere he goes, uh, I'll say some house. places, yeah. Some places, yes. Yeah. Some places, no. Because no. it's. I'll Did say you it's see a lot of that in Green Bay? Did you get a lot of like, hey, yeah, you're on Green. I, I get, I get, I get about seventy thirty. If I go to there, is rarely I gotta reach in my pocket, pull my wallet out. And then there's other places, that, and I'm okay. With, you know, other gotta, places they charge I you expect, double, I, yeah. yeah, or that. I mean, I expect to pay. I, I mean, I don't expect everybody to remember who I am and what I did. Hey, so I just go in knowing I can. You know, it's like AG walks into restaurants, full pads, jersey on, <laughs> no. helmet, helmet. <laughs> oh, I got yeah, a problem. I, got <laughs> I got a problem if I roll up. If it's, <laughs> guys, if it's not Halloween, and it's not San Diego or New York Comic Con. And you see me in my uniform, you got to check my pulse and check my heart rate, <laughs> make sure I'm okay. Do you uniform up for a Comic Con? No. Oh, for a con, yeah. You have? Oh, yeah. A Batman, my first one in 09. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I thought you were going in full pads, helmet. And I'll, I'll go, like, I haven't, but that's a, that's the saying. If I am, it's the only reason is because it's Comic Con or it's Halloween. I'm not going to just voluntarily put on my. Is your, is your Batman outfit just like top notch? It was. It's kind of ragged right now. It was the Michael Keaton. Uh, one so it was already old then because it was original one the guy um my wife found it online years ago she's like i come home one day i'm like she's like what i found on ebay and i'm like oh it's dope you know so we put it on a mannequin and kind of stretch it out but in some places it was kind of you know tether tethering yeah. away and so i when i got a chance to go to my first comic con in 2009 that july and i was like it was, as soon as i knew i was going i already said i already know because i've seen it before on internet the website and previewing where you show the b-roll of people going in dressing as different comic book characters all right as soon as i knew i was going my friend called me and said hey man i got you a ticket to the san diego i already name in my i already I knew exactly yeah. i knew the costume that i was wearing instantly <laughs> and and from there what i learned a lesson was you know comic con is a con you know it's a convention so it's people walking and talking and you're in your so if you're in your costume obviously you might sweat a lot because yeah. some of the costumes get a little, you know, they're uh -huh. not well ventilated. And so I wasn't sweating heavy, but I was sweating a little bit. But so I learned from there. It's like, if I'm going to cosplay this, if I'm going to be a cosplayer, I'm going to make sure my costume is, I say, war air friendly or like where I'm, I'm going to make sure I have vented practical stuff like Indiana Jones outfit, mm -hmm. Harrison Ford, like the hat, yeah. the button up little ragged shirt and some um, khakis and some boots. I said that works because it's San Diego in the summer. It gets toasty. 
even though you're right near the water, sometimes it gets real toasty days. So that one's a good one. And I just started watching One Piece. So now, since I, I say, since I know a little bit about One Piece, I could uh, dress up as uh, Luffy, the main character. He has a cutoff shirt with shorts. I'm like, that's perfect for San Diego <laughs> and flip flops. Have you thought about maybe the Incredible Hulk? Yes. Ooh, no yeah. shirt. Yeah, Game I thought on. about that. I thought about that. And my wife going is She-Hulk because actually that's her guy. She likes Hulk. So I'm like, all right, you go as She-Hulk. I go as Hulk. She's like, no, I don't want you walking around without a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, no, no, no. Tell me, tell me. I have a T-shirt. You know this T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Torn yeah. Off I, said, I have the T-shirt that's Hulk's body. How? Oh, but she was like, she thought it. She's like, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Ref, so. do you have a uh, favorite costume that you've ever worn for, I don't know, Halloween or any other occasion? Um, hmm. No, not really. <laughs> not really. I won a contest one year, but it wasn't a Halloween party, but it was Ooh, costume oh. party. So I, well, I, you, I, I won that. Win? I won that. I was a, um, I, I don't even know what the word I would use for it is. It was purple, had little gold, and it had sunglasses and felt, felt pants and a vest. And Are you a, sound like a pimp or a barn? <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> the description is like, I've seen, I heard purple <laughs> party. <laughs> And I'm thinking, okay, maybe Barney. And then you said, you said, you said sequence and glitter. And then like the shiny yep, yep, and yep. the I, pants. I, I, the, I won that party one year, so. Sounds like you dressed up as a couple different things at yeah, once. Yeah, it's, it's what I do. It's what I do. Oh, man, that's a good one. I mean, I, I mean I, I've tried to dress up as John Elway a few times in my younger years, but I never really was that that great. What, what wasn't great about the John Elway outfit? It's just jersey and I just, shirts. Yeah. But or I, a pair of pants. Yeah, I just never, I didn't have the official Denver Broncos pants. If I'd had the pants, uh, then I would have been. So I'd you. always, like, I'd always wear white pants, which, because they were white, but without yeah. the blue and orange yeah. on the side. Did you put uh, knee thigh pads in? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Helmet? You had a helmet? Oh, yeah. Helmet. The old up. Denver helmet, the old school helmet. Yeah. Right. That's so, back when it was, back so, in the old days. Yeah, it was probably the 80s. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah. The original helmet was yeah. Nice. Those those helmets were dope. The 70s, throwback, 80s, yeah, the, the throwback helmets yeah. for the different Denver Broncos. That was what made my love of Denver Broncos right there. Hey. There it is. I uh, first season I started watching the Bears. I went as uh, Brian Urlacher for Halloween. You shave your head? No. Ew. No. I yeah, guess you could have put on like, like a ball cap or something. I I, I just wore the helmet. I had a oh. I had a helmet, and then I actually got lucky. I got the Bears pants Ooh. in like the. Uh, just with like the costume or whatever. And I put my dad's Erlacher jersey on, which was obviously like down to my knees, but All right. <laughs> definitely couldn't play football like him. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, wasn't fast on the edge. Basically. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. That's why I talk sports. I don't play. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. <clears throat> oh, oh my goodness. Well, should we throw it a break? Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Good talk there. Let's Rap. throw it a break. This is the drive. 93.7. The ticket. Lincoln, you wanted more sweet and spice in your life, and now you've got it. At Wings and Rings, their brand new hot honey has all of Lincoln buzzing. Try their one-of-a-kind house-made sauce on the brand new hot honey chicken sandwich or their hot honey shrimp and slaw. And of course, you can get it on the traditional, boneless, or smoked wings that have made Wings and Rings your go-to neighborhood spot. Hot honey was supposed to be gone on April 1st, but they're extending it indefinitely. So stop by Wings and Rings at one of their two Lincoln locations today on O Street and on Village Lane. Spring sports are here and it's time to upgrade your equipment. But don't go rush into your big box store. Played Against Sports is your place to go for all spring sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, and disc golf. Played Against Sports has quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And don't forget, buying from them is a great way to get new products with great discounts by also bringing in your used items for store credit or cash on the spot. Played Against Sports at 48th and Vine. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? 
book clubs and quilting clubs? Nah, forget that. How about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs? Get to Upside Bar and Lounge for the best clubs in town. Try all 10 varieties of Upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass. Grab the whole crew and pair it with Taco Night on Mondays or Whiskey Wednesdays. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Bagels and Joe is the perfect place for breakfast or lunch in April. Try their brand new cake batter cream cheese on any breakfast sandwich. And try the caramel latte as 10% of proceeds from that drink will go to the foundation for Lincoln Public Schools. Four locations in Lincoln and one in Seward, Bagels and Joe. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. Tune in every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. for the Malone Radio Show on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Don't miss the opportunity to learn about the Malone Community Center's goal to eliminate multi-generational poverty in Lincoln and the surrounding area. It's the Malone Radio Show with Executive Director John Goodwin and Sports Director Mike Hunter every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, many sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. Then a chance of showers and storms late. We'll see a high around 83. Tonight, showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe. We'll see a low near 63. And tomorrow, more showers, potentially storms likely, the high around 73. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clark for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Nutrition Authority invites you to save 35 to 75% off at the Spring Mega Sale. We're taking our better than internet prices and cutting them even deeper, bringing you the biggest sale of the season. Monday, April 15th through Saturday, April 20th, the Spring Mega Sale is on at Nutrition Authority. For location information, check us out at MyNutritionAuthority.com. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to The Drive with A.D., Raph, and Amon Green on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, everybody, we are back again. This is The Drive on 93.7 The Ticket. It is Monday, and I have got to let you guys know, being Monday, that this first hour is proudly sponsored by Sand Hills Global. Sand Hills Global is looking to fill hundreds of new openings in sales, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Career and internship opportunities are available at the Global Headquarters in Lincoln. Apply today at sandhills.jobs. All right, right. we're back. It's Monday. It's the day after the Masters. The guy said they watched very minimal Masters. Well, I was watching esports. So I yeah, you, you, I were, you were working. Josh, I was there's, working. there's no excuse. Yeah, no excuse no. for Josh. <laughs> yeah. No excuse. Amon's working, grinding, doing his thing. Trying to get my Smash players and other team players like Overwatch, Valorant, Rocket League better by watching the other competitive uh, grand finals for all those games. So how, no. how many recruits? So how many recruits are you going for like for next year? How many new? So people? every year we have uh, 10. So we have 10 partials. 10 partials. Yep, all right. right now. So you're, so. how many have you offered in the year? Or when is recruiting? We're at five. Well, it's kind of all year. I say, but the school guidelines is try to get them same time as signing day for football, for okay. fall sports. So like February okay. time zone. And so it starts in January, November 1st of the fall to February 1st is the, the last week or going into February 1st is the last uh, time where, where you um, announce and offer kids so then they could get it so february 1st gives them and the school plenty of time to get them all the information if they since they're partials they could get more scholarships um to get awarded to them too so they have plenty of time between february to august when school starts to get all that managed and understood that's, so. that's wild that's yep 
That's gonna be when you get that up and going completely. Yeah, full rides. Oh man, it's gonna wait. It's gonna be a monster. It's gonna change it. Ooh, it was big fun. A lot of people were there. Yeah. Awesomeness. Awesomeness. So then, what about this? Then, then, then another another school will be coming and going. Aman, you want to come? And no, Aman will be in like a no. salary no. cap. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. no, this is where I want to coach. That's where I want to coach anyway for a long time. And for it being esports, no, nah, it's nobody. Hell or high water can't get me out of here. Uh, AG's in lifetime contract. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> let me let me go. All right. So we had the Masters this weekend. We had Scotty Scheffler winning his second Masters. Okay, second. All right, no. Yep, number two. Now he won one in 2022. Oh, oh yeah, this is his third win this year. Oh yeah, looking at this. Got it. So PGA, yeah. So Scotty, um, his wife expecting a baby like Jake's wife. Wow. Actually, nice. so he was go. going. He he so went win win. He yeah. went well. He went into the weekend and he said, "If my wife Meredith goes into labor, I'm out. Hey, we're go. on. I'm going back. This is our first kid. I'm going back to Texas, and I'm going to be with my wife. So oh. at any point. So yesterday I was thinking when he went up with, yeah, I think he had four stroke lead with like four to play or something like that. I was like. I think this is the time where one of the one of his um, competitors goes, Scotty, just got a call from your wife. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that, that's trying to throw him off. She's in labor. That's you, you better you better take off now. Street rules, trash <laughs> talk, right there. Don't want somebody off. You, you know, you got to go. You yeah. said you were leaving. Uh, yeah, we had it was a couple of coaches trying to like play mental games up there with me and my players. And I was like, don't ignore them. <laughs> don't, that's street ball. So I grew up playing street ball rules where you just talk trash to talk trash or you, you, try, say, try random, to get in their head. you say random things to try to get in your head. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure Chef Fleur was like, no, nah, I'm tapped in right now. Yeah, he, um, he, Only if my wife calls me directly or my caddy then gives me the phone, then, then, then it's going to be I'm out. But if I'm just hearing it from you, that means I'm about to beat you and you worried about me doing what I'm doing. Nah, nah, man. Back up. The thing that's impressed me so much about Scotty Scheffler, especially over the last year and a half, two years. He is unflappable. Like he, like he's not per, he's not perfect. Like he, like Tiger back in the like the early the nineties, the early two thousands, he was just so good. He just destroyed people. Scotty Scheffler, great player, playing great golf. But what what makes him, I think, so great is when he doesn't when he has a bad hole or two. Like Saturday, he had a two. I think he had a two stroke lead on Saturday, and he double bogeys. He goes back in. They go down to like a five-way tie for first place and you're thinking to yourself oh man this is scotty he kind of gave up the masters here i think actually he went down maybe two strokes from the lead mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he's just so unflappable it keeps his cool goals e be. eagles a hole ends up being one stroke in the lead going into going into sunday and then yesterday it was like it, they got to about the oh, 13th hole 12 13th hole yesterday and he just he just went into a whole different the way he plays like even just the way that he he like sometimes you get the lead like that and you're like you don't take the foot off the gas but you yeah. definitely don't sh you get a little conservative and you're trying just to lay up just still getting up just mashing drives hitting further you know 30 mm -hmm. yards further than more cowell was i'm just it was it was impressive it was an impressive showing it's going to be fun to watch him this year to see i would Say, I was gonna sound crazy. I mean, I don't know what the course the what the British Open looks like this mm -hmm. year, but I would say that he has the, probably one of the better chances of possibly pulling off the Grand Slam, winning all four majors, mm -hmm. than probably all right, all right. probably not. Uh, Tiger has his Tiger Slam where he won over a calendar year or how four consecutive, not yeah, over he, a calendar. He had yeah, a few. yeah. But I think Scotty Scheffler is that guy. I think he goes into Unless, unless there's something to where he gets injured, but he, I think he'll be favored at every major the rest of the year. He's that he's that good right now. And then I was also, I was also wanting to ask text line too. This is, do you think that the live players, it's a detriment to them now playing in live? I mean, the money wise, it's not a detriment. Like they, yeah, you got to take the it money. Can, it's yeah. Like John yeah. Rom taking five hundred million, you got to take the money. However, from a playing standpoint, they're not playing as consistently as what these PGA the PGA players are playing, like almost every single weekend leading up to the Masters. So unless you're Tiger, everyone. of course, who's injured, but 
or not injured, but just to plays the abbreviated schedule. But right. you have all these guys that have played every almost every single week leading up to Masters. Well, then you have John Rahm, who who won the Masters last year, just never put anything together. This, this and, he, and he's a live live player. He's a live player. the The highest uh, live player this week was um, Bryson DeChambeau. He, yeah. I think he finished in fifth, fifth or sixth place. Yeah, and, well, it, and with that, oh, go Josh. Oh, I was just gonna say, like with these live golf players, right? It's hard to get into a rhythm when you're barely playing, right? And you're kind of sacrificing everything you've worked for. And yes, Raf, you are right. You have to take the money. If someone oh, throws yeah. 500 million yeah, at you, you out. but right. you also have to understand that you're going to have to find a way to keep up your playing because by taking that money, you're already probably guaranteed going to see a decrease in your play. And that's a sacrifice you have to make. And you also have to think love, <clears throat> love of the game. Don't you want to be playing as much as you can? I mean, and take a little bit of a pay cut, but that's kind of not the way society has been rolling for, you know, the yeah. last 10 ish years. Yeah. Because, because I see it like this. I, I understand I'm sure they're still playing a lot. However, they are playing, you know, 54 holes with shorts on and team golf over it and live. It. And it just seems like when they get to like the, the main, the masters and stuff like that, it's just, it's like, it's something you got to, it's got to be consistently like I'm on, like you, when you were playing in the NFL, I mm -hmm. mean, you probably could have took, you know, four weeks off and then came back and played, but then, there's probably a little rust on the tires, I'm guessing, the for you know, getting back into the getting back into the stream of things. But oh, I, yeah. I assume when you're playing, you know, a sixteen week season back when back when you were playing sixteen week seasons, you probably were wanting the consistency of playing every season. Like, okay, for instance, yeah. would you have mm -hmm. rather at the end of the year Packers get a bye? So mm -hmm. say you can sit out the next two games. Would you have took the two games off, would one game off, or can playing right into the playoffs? What what work best for you it would it would depend on what worked what best for me was obviously continue gameplay stay yep. in my rhythm but i knew also that if we got to buy i got i knew my coaches at that time sherman or mccarthy would keep us busy playing having practices real structured practices um not as physical because it's the 18th week of football but more mental test texting texting so we could think you know what we're going to do in two minutes what we're going to do in red zone certain situations pop up so our coaches knew the coaches I had knew how to really prepare and give us a little more effort um, of schedule so we didn't lag behind the eight ball going into that next playoff yep. game because of the bye and that 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 is a I say that is a, a nice tool to have as a coach to where you know how to design practice structure to where you get everything out of us but you don't wear us out all at the same time yep. because you want us fresh and ready for the next week mentally and physically, but also you don't want to. So it's like a lot less physical, but more mental taxing. Uh, like I mentioned with, with game situation, but what um, the first part of it was you know, about with the live players. I want to uh, make a comment on. It's like they got it now. This is only what a couple years old now, this league. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. so how you fit that into your schedule, if they're playing both leagues, right? They're playing PGA and live. Yep, they can only play live right yeah, now. Okay. They can only play live. So they got to come up, do the same thing. They got to come up with a schedule. Now you were talking about right. structure. Right. They got to structure a schedule that they don't lose their timing. They don't get their in their groove. They get to their groove a lot faster and they keep it because obviously if they're playing less games as a professional, I'll be like, all right, I got to do this because yep. I want to make sure I win. Because if I'm going to still go every now and then to a PGA event, that's one of the majors and I don't want to be back. And I want to, yeah. I mean, I'm a, if I finish in the top five, I want to be one or two. I don't want to be the, the the fifth or sixth or the tenth person, you know, winning. So, yeah, yeah the, because, the, because like even Dustin Johnson, for instance, you know, he one of the top players in the world, you know, two, three, four years ago, you know, he went to the live now. I mean, he wasn't, he, I, he was in the plus tens. And I, I was just thinking about that. I was like, here, they're playing, they're only playing in their tournaments when they do play. I think they play eight tournaments a year. A year? And they only play 54 holes. So now you go to the Masters, 72 oh. holes. You're playing against these guys that have played, yeah. you know, they've been playing every single, almost every single week for the most part. It's just like, it's just like, I know you're great, but you've got these other guys that, that are playing every single, the consistency of it all, playing the 72 hole tournaments. So it's going to, it'll be interesting to see what the live does because there have been a couple of live players that have came out and said that they would want turn their tournaments to be 72 holes, like normal, PGA golf tournaments, but it's kind of funny. Live, you know what live stands for? No. Well, I always wonder what that 50, 54. So basically, you're, uh, you're taking their oh, your the holes. 54. Got it. Got it. And oh. your promotional thing. <laughs> yeah. a, promo, a promo thing. Nice. But with that, okay, that's it. You just answered my question. 
to if I'm a player, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play 72 homes for my training. Yeah. You got to work out anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Might as well do the stuff, maybe do a little bit more. Because in football, baseball, basketball, all the dribbles, all the BP, catching balls from your quarterback or running with your old lineman or running sprints as a wide receiver and running back, that's what you do in offseason. And you do it knowing that, okay, if I had, I rushed for 1,800 yards one year in 03. So I, I knew. I remember there so, was a long run against the Broncos. Yeah, bro. In the last game. Hey, of the year. It's yeah. not my fault that they benched uh, after they started. <laughs> there he went. So where I'm going with this, Raph, um, <laughs> is that up to that every year, up to that year, my conditioning in off season was a certain at a certain level, and I made sure I re, I duplicated every year from 2000. I rushed for a thousand. So that means in the off season, I would run two, three thousand yards in wind sprints and stadium stairs and if i went on a vacation run on the beach so i'm equaling that amount i'm gonna do on the football field when it come fourth quarter where everybody was like man well how could you be full speed fourth quarter fourth quarter well i trained my body for it so golfers can do the same thing 72 holes at pga events you know what that's what I'm, that's what my training is going to be during the week when i'm in the lift you know we only have 52 rounds but me doubling my load for that to be ready to compete at a high level and live but then i'm gonna be at the same level as the most American players. So then I'm not, I'm going to be finishing top five every year or every, every event. And if not winning it, because that was a reps on top of reps. And then the competition side of it, this is what I was explaining to my players out in, you know, Columbus is that, and this is for any athlete. This is for us that was in here. We all play some sport at one point in time at the certain level. When you get to the highest level of your sport or e-sport, everybody's kind of from the fundamentals, it's the same, yep. but then now it's just the mental in that moment. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you, are, what you're breathing? Are you nervous? Are you breathing fast? Like, oh my God, I'm here. If I do this play, game's over. How are you thinking? And how are you under rationalizing and, pro and processing that information of the situation? So are you ready for it? Or you're not even thinking about what's going to happen when we win? It's like, no, I'm going to win because I got to do this, this, and this. Or you're, you're in panic mode where you're in ang your anxiety mode. So it's just that's having those commands on those part of your body your emotion wise then you could get through that a lot faster and be the be the winner and be the victor basically yeah it's all it's all about maintaining yeah. intensity like you and mentioned because to maintain the intensity that leads to the mental sharpness like you talk about your mm -hmm. response when you're doing great and like you mentioned raf how scotty scheffler is able to respond really well when he's down and sometimes when you start to get out of a groove you lose that intensity and you forget what it's like to be in that environment you know yep. it's a lot different yeah. going from a 54 hole leisure fest to 72 holes every weekend yep. and you're playing you'll start feeling it right e exactly yep. and then the next question tiger woods mm -mm. so he broke the record with fred couples for most um qualifying for the final so qualify so he qualified you play the final two days but then he blew up a lot on saturday and sunday but i know that the score was high and I know there's a lot of people are like, yeah, I, this is it for Tiger Woods. But I think mm -hmm. he can take some positives from this. I know he he, he struggled. He had he definitely had a couple holes yesterday. I think he had a quad yesterday. I did. However, right. he said he's verified after the Masters. He is still planning on playing all three of the next um, majors. So I think it's the more he get if he can somehow, and it seemed like. Third round, he was struggling. He was laboring a little bit. But yesterday, it didn't look like he was laboring as much around the golf course. He had a couple, <clears> of, <throat> a couple times where he labored a little bit in the third round. But I think a lot of that was he was going, you know, ten over par, and it starting to things were starting to mount up. So sometimes those little tweaks and stuff in your body hurt a little bit more when your course is giving it to you the way it is. <laughs> right. But I'm thinking that he he might have not. I'm gonna say found something, but. Getting that now because the last couple of tournaments that he's played, he hasn't played the full the full he's he's pulled yeah, he, out early. He's physically can't make it. You would think knowing that and the way he used to train when he was playing at the high level, and we know everything that he's been through, you would think that he would have that part. That's the basic level. It's just your your physical preparation. Yep. And even though fo I won't say about to say football, golf is not as physical taxing as any other traditional sport, but it has the walking part of it though. Yep. And that's the part where then again, just like I mean, it's almost I mean, I'm, I'm rinsing and repeating, right? Um, I gotta walk 72 holes, so that means I'm gonna probably have to walk stairs or get on the beach 
walk on the sand to big, you know, make my leg, help my leg, yep. you know, <clears throat> get used to on the walking of the hills where they're at at them because there's hills and the caddies right behind them. So they cannot get in, you know, there's not a foursome or a charity event where you could yeah. jump in the, the golf cat, uh, the caddy, um, the, the cart and, and go. And so I would just hope he gets the right training because yeah. He gets back to that healthy. He's not. He's only. If we're close. Me and my, me and Tiger are close to the same age. Yeah, so 48. I know he can get there physically. He just got to focus on that. I know he has to do his golf. See, and I think. Of and it, I so. think he. I think he might have. I know. Like I said, the score was high, and maybe that. Just what he's been through. I mean, his body. I'm mean, like he said. He's sore the every surgeries, night. Surgeries, right? The stress. But, and but making else. it through four rounds at the Masters because he will not. There is not another course out there that's going to be as hilly as the. Augusta is on TV. It does not do it justice to what it is. You've been? I've never been okay. there, but I haven't been there. I want to go. Just my friends and my brother in law and the people that have been there it said it, it's insane that the hills. And so, being that, if he can somehow get in a tournament before these, these uh, majors, knowing that he walked the Masters and made it through four rounds, yeah, the score was, you know, astronomical. But I think. He might, this might be something for him that he can take this as a positive. So I'm not saying he's going to win another, win a major this year, but what I am saying, I think he will be much more competitive in the next ones that he plays. So I think yeah. the thing is for Tiger, what you have to look at, and like you mentioned, Raph, score isn't really the big, you know, the big target here for Tiger. You want to see those little physical improvements because, like you mentioned, he has been through so much. So to see him at least get through that, now it's like, okay, you can focus on getting that score up because you can't get the score or down, I should say. Yeah. You can't get the score down if you're not physically able to be there. Yeah, and right? I and the, the Augusta is just cra- – the hills are crazy and what he's been through from a, the walking standpoint and just making it through four rounds. And then he played, what, 23 holes on – 23 or 24 holes on Saturday. I mean, that takes – I mean, I understand the score was high, but he made it through it. And it, it, this is going to show him, like, hey, if I can make it through 24 holes. So I, it's, I, I don't think a lot of people, are, you know, like I even know that the broadcasters yesterday kind of said something like, could this have been the last competitive round we see Tiger Woods? And I, I think far from. I think no, I, I agree th- with you, right? I think far from. He's too, too much of a competitor to not be at his best yep. and then walk out, yeah. right? Because as athletes, that's what we want. We want to finish on top. We want to. Yeah. Have a world championship. We want to have a major. We want to have a Super Bowl when we give out. Obviously, one fact is that doesn't work out sometimes that way. And you got to be okay with that as a professional. Yep. And you got to look at the back of your career. And you look back at your career, excuse me, and say, you know what? But he could do that. He could look. He's one of the athletes that could look back at their career and be like, you know what? I did do something. Oh, yeah. You know, so but that one game that's in front of you, though, as a competitor, you, it's going to irk you. Yep. Because you're physically in it. There's nobody telling you you can't. Just your body's telling you because you have to rehab. He, he just came out, you know, all the surgeries and all that stuff. But you have layers of things on top, right? Life, uh, the stress of walking on the course to, I guess, to, to everything else around you. It's just hopefully we can, he can manage this to get him to the next one, next major, to understand what he needs, what, it, what his body needs. And I say, if anything, one thing is get to a point where he can recover yep. and then start the training back to make sure he can walk these courses without having a limp. That would be, that should be his mental goal, not to walk the course to be there, walk the course to not limp because then no limp. That means everything else is going to line up his swing. When he puts, if he's in a weird situation where the ball went in the rough and now he has to stand on a hill and that knee could take it. That's what you want. You know, that's what he would want because just walking and being on the course where, you know, He's getting from hole to hole. That's 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 different from actually able to hit the ball certain directions or certain situations. Being a golfer, I mean, I'm not a great golfer, but I know what it takes with to, to hit a ball. And for knowing that with the knee and other injuries that he has, that he's trying to fight through. It's tough, and you you could tell when you see it out there. It's it's frustrating, and then it gets it gets more frustrating every hole he misses. You mm-hmm. know, from a short like a unusual six foot putt that he will, will drain. Now he's missing those. And then he has to hit the the twelve inch putt, and then that, it's like, and you see his face is like, oh god, this is where I'm at right now. So, but he has to take a step back and look at, okay, let me let me get this knee right, really right, and train hard because we know he goes hard. He used to train with the Marines when he was, you know, when he came out one of his surgeries. I remember hearing that, and I'm like, I hope 
they didn't go pedal to the metal because I know how Marines train. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a few. Um, but hopefully, like I said, he gets that game plan right to where his body is right. Because when the body's not right, then everything else doesn't fall in the line. Well, all right. Well, we will throw it to break. This is the drive, 93.7, the ticket. Three seven the ticket. Fox KFXL weather brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today: mainly sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. That a chance of showers and storms late. See a high around eighty three tonight. Showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe. If you see a low near sixty three, and tomorrow more showers, potentially storms likely. The high around seventy three. I mean, you're all just power collector for ninety three point seven the ticket and the ticket FM Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Bagels and Joe is the perfect place for breakfast or lunch in April. Try their brand new cake batter cream cheese on any breakfast sandwich. And try the caramel latte as 10% of proceeds from that drink will go to the foundation for Lincoln Public Schools. Four locations in Lincoln and one in Seward, Bagels and Joe. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local family business owners and actively involved in our community. Last year, I voted for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bozin for Legislature. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. What's your radon level at home? Don't know? Find out with a call to Bryant Air Conditioning and Heating. 467-1111 for radon testing and mitigation. The Double the Saving Sales event is happening now through April 22nd at Bonds All Pool and Spa. During this event, buyers can take advantage of up to $1,500 in savings and receive 0% APR for 60 months. Visit the Bonds All Pool and Spa showroom at 33rd and Pioneers or visit their website at bondsallpool.com to learn more about their hot tub sale. Act fast because this offer ends soon. Bonds All Pool and Spa, every day made better. Tune in every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. for the Malone Radio Show on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Don't miss the opportunity to learn about the Malone Community Center's goal to eliminate multi-generational poverty in Lincoln and the surrounding area. It's the Malone Radio Show with Executive Director John Goodwin and Sports Director Mike Hunter. 
every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now back to The Drive with A.D., Raph, and Amon Green on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, everybody, we are back again. This is The Drive on 93.7 The Ticket. It is Monday. It is pretty nice outside. I think a little bit a little bit of rain tonight or tomorrow. Man, pretty or nice. It's already 60 degrees. It's beautiful Bro. for space. No. Okay. Forever <laughs> waves up. Oh, sorry. My bad. I get a little singing. Yeah, you, get the, you put the mic in front of me sorry, and you never know going what you're going to get. There, right? All right, a little bit of history, history, history. You want me to start off the show with, mm-hmm. with for a little bit of history? All right. Yes, indeed, man. 1896. Oh, a long time ago. The first modern Summer Olympics Games closed in Athens, Greece. And the reason why I bring that up is because we got the Olympics coming up here pretty soon. So, yeah, this summer. I just saw today that um, Jimmer Fredette, you remember Jimmer? Yep. yep. He's he plays he's playing on the three on three Olympic team, so he's hoping to oh, really? cap off his his basketball career. I was gonna say the, basketball or tennis. Yep, yeah. Jimmer <laughs> Jimmer Fredette. Oh. So I hadn't heard that name in a long time, but he's playing three on three. So there yeah. might be a chance. I would assume that Casey will probably be playing for the three on three team. God, that's amazing. So there's a chance that Casey might be facing off against Jimmer Fredette. I mean, Casey did take home gold in 2020. Yeah, well, 2021. Really? We, the world no. needs a Casey versus Jimmer Fredette matchup. Oh man, I mean. Having three on three, he had the big three, right? And then you got flag football now. Yeah, women, men's and women flag football yeah. in the Olympics, which is awesome to see. I didn't, I thought as a obviously as a football player, I thought it'd be tackle, but flag football, I get it. <laughs> but it, and it covers all, right? Everybody, you got yeah. young men, young women competing. And I watched a little bit of the world championships last year. It was some baller. I think it was either a South American team, either Mexico or. Italy might have won the first one. It was something like that. I'm like, man, they got us already. They caught up to us on the, on the field. Like, man, that's awesome. I would assume the flag football team, I would guess you maybe going to see maybe a couple, like just a s- couple receivers that maybe yeah. just retired from the NFL, possibly. Either just, or they, they said they were potentially might. Tyreek so, Hill. Some guys oh, were going to come out. That would be. And make the dream it just, team. It just depends how it mixes team. with the with the training camp, with the NFL training camp. Yeah, but stuff. it's Olympics. And I, I say, if I'm a head coach and I have Tyreek, if I'm Mike Daniels, I'm like, man, you get it. I say, because that's yeah. one in a lifetime thing. Like, you well, can't. Well, this is the thing. I think Mike uh, Daniels might say, yeah, you're good. But the owners might say, E-e-e-e-e. Well, the, yeah, talking to the owner, I'll be like, hey, this I mean, you you don't get an opportunity to play in the Olympics as a person unless you're that one percent at what uh, so whatever event you're doing. So I would do my best talking to the ownership <laughs> with the Dolphins, like, hey, hey, y'all, come yeah. on. Come yeah, on. I think these, we can PR this somehow, right? Yeah, you know, end, end of the day, the owners don't care about gold medals; they True. care about Facts. green stuff. Facts. So I Facts. think Facts. they might be saying, "Well, hey, Tyreek, we're paying you about you yeah. know twenty five, thirty million here." I'll be like. I'll try to hold up. I'll try to protest. But um, also <laughs> for this year's Olympics, we will say some. We'll see something that they're going to use as esports, but it won't be esports. That's unfortunate for myself and the fans out there. So, from my knowledge, right now they're using. They will be using events that already happen, like they're already going on at the Olympics, like rifling and other things like that, and just doing it in simulation mode. So mm-hmm. to them, okay. the the OIC thought that was like, oh, that's still esports. Uh, no, it's not. So for me and people in my position, directors, coaches all over the world, all over the U.S., because uh, it's in France this year, correct? Is it Olympics in France? Yep, yep, yes. it is. Yep, yep because um, Chris Chris Collinsworth was wanting L. Michaels to take him with him, or, or Mike Trico <laughs> to take him with him. <laughs> right. So knowing that information, I'm like the OIC. You need me or need Doc Haskell or any other coaches around the world here in America or even the esports org owners that are near France over there, like Envious and other big esports orgs to say, hey, that's not esports. But the good thing is it's already been put on the Doc. Oh, board. my gosh. I've got to say this. Oh, we got something. This guy just there. parked on the opposite. Well, the opposite on the on O Street. 
We got, on the opposite, the car face, so he's going against the grain. I don't know how he's done this. So, yeah, we got full disclosure. We have a construction site next door <laughs> across the street, and we've been spectating the the pieces of rubble that fall off the building. So the, the lead out of my conversation. This car, is fa- this car is facing the wrong way on right. O Street. He either works there or. That's hard to do. Yeah. So he had to come across the. The medium the street. So, Wow. I didn't see it. I was talking. I have now seen it all. I have seen it all now on O Street. Um, but to where, where I left off at before Raph. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I just I just saw him pull in. Can you the, see the car? The, the, the car and the rubble potential. Um, <laughs> but for 2020, 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles, there will be official esports. There will be Rocket League. There will be potentially Valorant or Overwatch or League of Legends or Super Smash Brothers. Tekken, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. And it will be legit. The video games that we compete in at the college level and at the pro level in Los Angeles. And so they're going to get it right. If they, They're going to kind of Olympic fumble. coach, I'm on green. Potential. Ooh, I'll take Hello. it. Hello. Hey, so there'll be a little fumbling of the esports in 2024. But then in 2028, they're going to secure it and get it right. And being in LA, I think it's, it's, it fits because you got Activision Blizzard out there in Santa Monica. Um, and then the whole West Coast, you got Microsoft up in Seattle, and you got a bevy of company. EA also has the headquarters in San Francisco area, so you got a bevy of developers that's going to be in that area. So that'd be that's that, the time. That's the time to, to really see esports. You see teams and countries compete for silver, gold, and bronze medals for the games that we're playing at the college level and at some of the pro levels around the world. Oh, I think that's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. I speak fun right there. Wow. You, got, you also have history for us, too. Oh, yeah. I chance? do. I do. I have game. I have a game that was so April 15th, 1984. Pitfall. What was that? Seven? Pitfall. Somewhere. No, what? Not Pitfall. Oh, Dig Ooh. Dug. Dig <laughs> Dug. No, we're not a, po- not a popular game. Oh. Right. It. Okay. But it was a game. It was War in Russia came out, and it was only two people, <laughs> two players. At a one point one and a half percent star on the game itself, but it was on Apple. It was actually it probably looks like I think it was one of the first games Apple also on PC and on console. It was on Atari Eight Bit in 1984. The publishers were Strategic Simulation, and it's a simulation strategy tactics top down turn based war game. War games. War game. Hey, would you like to play a game of global thermonuclear war? How, did you ever see War Games, the movie? Yes, of course. Yeah. With Matthew, with Matthew Rogers. Yes. yes, of course. Yes, War Games. I mean, that's with Dungeons and Dragons and was the. Uh, would you like uh, to play Goonies a game of Tic Tac Toe? So yeah, War Games came out in nineteen War in. I'm sorry, War in Russia. You got me saying War Games, right? <laughs> uh, war in Russia came out in 1984 on Apple II PC and the Atari 8 bit. So there you go. Nice. Yes. I, I got a quick bit here. Okay. April yeah. 15th, 1947, Jackie Robinson makes his MLB debut Man, with the Brooklyn Dodgers. It'd take him eight years, but the Dodgers would only win one World Series as the Brooklyn Dodgers. So their first one was in Brooklyn. The rest came in L.A. So mm-hmm. Nice. And then on day this day in 1997, they retired Jackie Robinson's jersey. Was it 97? 97, yeah. And then oh, okay. 2002 was that All-Star game. Where it was a tie in Brewer Stadium, and then the next year, Selig said, "Hey, no more ties. Yeah. We got to have a win, We're competitive, to mm. make sure." So we said that whoever gets the win in the All Star game gets home field advantage in the playoffs. Yep. Mm. Now so they I was at that game in the O two where it was a tie. Oh wow! In the stadium in uh, the left field stands, and I'm looking at the scoreboard. I'm like, "This game's gonna be a tie." <laughs> I'm watching because I'm I'm a baseball player, so I'm like. We about to get a tie, and everybody around me is like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, <laughs> "This is the last inning. That was the last out." Yep. And all star games don't go beyond innings. It this you play nine, that's it. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, oh. "All these fans are like shocked." I'm like, "How you not know it's no all no overtime in all star game? Because it's the all star game. It's like, why would you play?" But now they created a reason a year later because they didn't want the because in the, when it hit the news and you saw a tie baseball game in yep. the all star game, it, it was like you couldn't really. It was like, really. Yeah. And it was like, so it, they weren't prepared for that. <laughs> well, now, the they're, media, now, now they're back to it right. again. The they media, the it media out, wasn't so. prepared. To how, like, how do we talk about a tied All-Star game? You know, yep. All that. So I was at that game in the stadium, uh, Brewer Stadium. That was one thing. Fun thing about being a, a pro athlete. When you're in the city, whatever city you're in, you most likely could get free tickets to all the professional other games in the, in the state. Cool. 
So that was like that was like high school. You know, when you yeah. go, you get a football player, oh, you get free tickets to the basketball games. You That's get cool. friends play. I'm like, even though I didn't know no Supersonics or I didn't know no, I did know of the Mariners. I had King Griffey was my guy, but nice. But I thought that was one fool, one fun, cool thing I could do. Because I was a sports fan. And it was okay. like, when I got traded to Green Bay, I was like, oh, I got to go. I could go see some Brewers. I could go see some Buck games. Heck like, yeah. Oh, sweet. Don't have to pay a whole lot. Nice. Living the awesome. life. That's awesome. And before we throw it to break, I also just want to throw my thoughts and prayers out there to the Pinsick family. Um, over the weekend, Dan Pinsick passed away, mm. uh, former defensive line for Nebraska. I mean, Dan was the nicest, coolest dude. It, it was always cool when I got to see Dan. He'd always try to sack me because I played quarterback. So he'd always try to hit me, but he never, yeah, he'd get me. But, but yeah, just <laughs> thoughts and prayers out to the Pensick oh, yeah. family. They've been through so much over the last couple of years. And so uh, the drive throws out our sympathies. Yeah. And we will throw it to break. This is the drive 93.7, the ticket. Your business runs like a well-oiled machine. It's important that your actual machines do too. Stern is here to make sure you don't have to worry about that. They provide solutions for heavy equipment and automotive fuels, lubricants, and equipment guard options. And with Stern's commitment to customer service for the past 40 years, you know you have a partner to help support your operations for years to come. Contact Roger at Stern Company by calling 1-800-477-2744 or visit them online at stern.co. Stern Company, where problems meet solvers. It's 599 barbecue time. Hurry to Hogwild for a complete barbecue meal that's only 599. Get a one meat sandwich loaded with our award-winning barbecue plus your choice of a classic side and drink for just 599. Upgrade your sandwich to beef brisket for just a dollar more. Join us for lunch or dinner in Lincoln at 3210 Cornhusker Highway. Order online at gohogwild.com. But don't be late, we close at 8. Cover more acres with a pre-owned sprayer or planter from Landmark Implement, your local John Deere dealer. We offer one of the area's largest selections of used sprayers, applicators, planters, and seeders. Through the month of April, take advantage of fixed rate financing as low as 4.5% for up to 60 months or an 8-month interest waiver. Visit your local Landmark location or view our complete sprayer and seeding inventory online at LandmarkImp.com and experience the Landmark difference. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. At Doan University, we build leaders, and that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours. And our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today, mainly sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. That a chance of showers and storms late. See a high around 83. Tonight, showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe. See a low near 63. And tomorrow, more showers, potentially storms likely. The high around 73. I mean, you're all just Kyle Clark for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. 
Bauer. Usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red. Early break with Sip and Jake. I called. You didn't return the call. Uh, called okay. a couple times yesterday. No, nothing. Uh, I, but I did try to hold it. I called Crickets. first, and then I got this. I don't know where Sip was. If you're in the bathroom, <laughs> I get the. He goes. He has to go. Goes, hey, hang tight. I'm writing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I'm like, well, why are you whispering to me? You said it just like that. Hey, uh, sit tight on that one. I'm, uh, I'm writing right now. And I'm like, what is he doing? Can you in the was, bathroom or what? Where are you at? The, the scoop of what happened. Yeah, where sip. were you when I called you? Because I did call you back. <laughs> Hang tight. That was Hang tight. I'm, I'm right here. Early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. Happy hour. I want to talk about the uh, master's menu breakfast master's blend fresh brewed coffee a chicken biscuit a breakfast sandwich so that's breakfast sandwiches egg salad sandwich pimento cheese sandwich a pork barbecue sandwich if you have like a loose 20 in your pocket and you go to pba for a basketball game you're getting french fries and water like that's it so if you have 68 dollars you can buy one of everything on the menu. $68 gets you one of everything on this master's concession menu. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM for 93.7 The Ticket. Welcome to The Drive with A.D. Raff and Amon Green. Former Husker football national champion, speaker, and author, Aaron Davis. Nebraska will win the national championship. The Cornhuskers beat Miami. It is history. 13-0. And bring that trophy back to Lincoln. Former Arena Football League quarterback, former head coach of the Capital City Crush, and guru of Husker football history, Chris Rath. 25 straight wins for the Cornhuskers. One of the most dominating stretches college football history we may have seen one of the best teams in the history of college football tonight 12 year nfl veteran he's got some speed to go with strength huskers and green bay packers hall of famer shovel pass to green into the vikings territory finally brought down and university of nebraska e-sports coach amon green look at green all by himself 20 10 touchdown Sponsored by Doors Plus on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, everybody, we're back again. This is The Drive on 93.7 The Ticket. Hour 2 is proudly sponsored by Doors Plus. If your garage door needs maintenance or you need an entirely new garage door, give Cameron Hall and his team a call today at 402-590-5800. Doors Plus is locally owned and handles everything from residential or commercial garage doors, garage door openers, safety tune-ups, or custom design. Visit DoorsPlusLLC.com to learn more. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. So time's yeah. flying. Yeah. Time's so, flying. The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. Over. Over. And right now, it's the WNBA draft. It's Back time for the draft. And... We're just watching it during break. Is the you know Caitlin Clark? She's on SNL already. She hasn't even been officially a pro yet, but we already knew this was coming, right? I mean, Caitlin see, Clark mania. And I love those two guys, Michael Che, and I can't think of the other guy's name right now, but they're hilarious when they do their news reads for the day, and to have her on with them, and uh, oh, just it just, but it's also telling you now forecasting what what's down the street for uh, Caitlin. We already know oh. that we. Should, but what is it? The Indiana um, Spark the fever, the fever, fever, fever. Have the number one pick. Indiana tonight. Fever already called it months ago. We, we like, hey, give us give us twenty two Iowa, please. They already called that like three months ago. But then you got <laughs> other players like uh, Camela Cardoza, uh, Cameron Brink from Stanford, Cardoza from South Carolina, Rakia Jackson from Tennessee. You know, most of those players being inside players, big girls, tall girls, six seven and above, six four. Um, also, Aaliyah Edwards from UConn. And you have the teams like Chicago Sky, Dallas Wings that are, have also two first round picks on Monday, mm-hmm. along with the uh, Indiana Fever. So it's uh, it's a point now. Obviously, this is a point in history, probably not even this year, but leading up to this years before that now, you know, women's NBA draft or WNBA draft is something of, of that. Obviously, it's taken notice, just like the we were talking about also as they joked about it, the um, 
the viewership of some of the games going on and where they're out, you know, breaking records. And it's just showing the change of things going on in the world today. And so for me to see it, I'm very excited. And just to see that what commercials <laughs> I'm going to see, you know, and then obviously the competition. When the competition starts up here in the summer for the WNBA, we got is going to see where they pan out and see where these yep. players pan out, how Kate Clayton is going to start her first year as a rookie um, and how they're going to adjust to that next level. Because then obviously they were great at the college level, but then it's now you make that step. Are you able to make that step and not stumble because of the adjustments that's going to have happen? Because these NBA the WNBA pros, I know how pros think. They're like, oh, we got a new batch of fresh meat coming in. You know, we're going to play defense. We're going. This is how we <laughs> play defense at the pro level. So it is not going to just let you sit out there on the logo and shoot. We're going to have hands in the face. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're going to body you up in the paint. So it's going to be a different level, you know, because when I remember when I came in way back, even though and football being a more physical sport, trust me, guys knew who I was and I was there. They had, I had a target on my back or I mean, but I was a guy that if Caitlin has this mentality or any of these ladies have the mentality, it's like, you know what? Yeah, I know I got a target on my back, but you know, what? are you, will you be ready when you come hit me? Yep. You know, when you try to D me up, oh, I'm not scared. You know, so I'm I'm waiting to see how they react to that. And I think it's going to be very competitive for all these young ladies, including Kate, Caitlin Clark when she gets drafted. Yeah, that's how I see too. I see kind of twofold there. I see that you're going to have these ladies that are wanting to shut down Kate and Caitlin Clark. They've already talked about it. How hey, when she gets to WNB, they she she's facing a whole different right monster. However, however, the WNBA I think needs Kate and Caitlin Clark to come out. And be a star, superstar, because I think she is the hope for the league to to draw the attendance, to draw the TV ratings. Because, don't get mad at me for saying this, I, I can't say over the last 20 years of the WNBA that I've watched many games or have known many players or, mm-hmm. I mean... There's just not, uh, like, there's not a ton of, like, there, there's been stars in college. Like, the one, the, like, the lightning rod of all of them, like, Brittany Griner, for instance. Yeah. When Brittany Griner was at Baylor, I mean, that was, at the end there, it was kind of like can't miss basketball just to see what she was going to do. Was she going to dunk? Was mm-hmm. she going to put up some crazy amount of points? But when she went to the WNBA, I I didn't know. I, to be honest with you, I didn't know. I hadn't heard Brittany Griner's name until the whole, you know, Debacle, the yeah, yeah. That took place. But other than that, she never brought those eyes to the WNBA. I think Caitlin Clark is the one that if she can come out and, you know, mm. throw some three pointers down and put up some points to where she might be able to draw that crowd. And then at the end of the day, you know, we always talk about the owners in the league and they care about money and butts in seats and stuff like that. Like I saw a little bit of the UFL this weekend, not a ton because I was watching golf. But I saw down in Bur- <laughs> I saw highlights of Adrian Martinez down in Birmingham. Yeah, had a I, watched, great game. I watched a little bit of that game. I just, I was like, oh, I know that guy. Had a I great game. Good job. He had an okay game. However, did you see the stands? Yeah, it's quiet. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's still- like you've got to get to to keep these leagues going and keep that you've got it. And and I know that you know pay wise, you know that the WNBA, they you know they always yeah, it's not there yet. Pay, yeah. it's like but to reason you, right. you've got to get the eyes on the game. And I think Caitlin Clark could be this person for the WNBA, not only for Caitlin Clark, but for the rest of these players that, you know, wanting paid more and wanting, because if she can have that same electric atmosphere that she created at Iowa, I mean that, so WNBA has got a lot, a lot on the line right now. Yeah. And I'll, I'll push back just a little bit. What, but there are players though on her level that already previously like set the tone for the WNBA. You got Deon, Diana Taurasi, baller, Elena Deladon, Sue Bird. Didn't really watch much of them. I mean, I know the names. I know I was watching. I don't know what you were doing. Were you, <laughs> that, were you watching WNBA or were you watching? Yes. That was dark. College you know, I, okay. I've been on it. I watch everything. I mean, college man. basketball, I get it. So, Connecticut, Final Four. I, I think a better word or better phrase to say it is this is the one. She's the one athlete of all the women athletes I just mentioned. Tarasi, Bird. Um, Candace Parker. Candace Sabrina Parker. Like, I you tell, mentioned I those could, names. So th- she's one that's just polarizing right now. Yeah. They're, of, of their time, they were polarizing, but they then had coupled in the same year. Like, Sarasi and Sue Bird might have been around the same time. Like, I couldn't tell you. So, like, like, yeah, no, they, they, they overlapped. Like, right, they Sue, overlapped Sue, Sue so, Bird, there was, so it was one person. Like, right now, it's just one person with kind of, like, pushing it. Kind of like when MJ came in the league, yeah. right? Yeah. 
1984. It was like everybody was like, "Oh man, this freshman from North Carolina, he that dude." Yeah. And now we're saying that about okay, she's that she's and that it, woman. Like, she's about like, to come in here and shoot from the logo. If def, if the guys, you know, girls don't get in her face, women don't get in her face. DVD in her up. So now, so but you still got a bevy of athletes prior to Caitlyn that basically opened doors, knocked down walls. They paved the path. Paid yes. the path. Yeah. For her to now be in the spotlight, to, to like, be like there, but is, I'm so. just saying That's they need, but they that. need yeah. like that that over like I, for instance, um, the first round, first pick last year, Boston, Leah Boston, was that her name? I believe so. Exactly. Let's get a fact check. Not yeah. sure. What team does she play for? No, nope, not sure. That's what that's what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. We need, or the WNBA needs that player that, like everyone's gonna know. Like they've done a good job so far that everyone knows she's gonna be Indiana Fever. I didn't even know Indiana had a team until three months ago. So like, what? come really? on, Chris. I did not WNBA team. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't know. I, I couldn't tell you um, who who's a player for the Los Angeles Sparks. Uh, Candace Parker. Candace for, Parker. Yeah. Okay. So you guys know us. We know a little. But that's bit. just a we little bit. But like, but like the first pick of the draft last year, Lady Boston. I'm not clue. She plays Brianna Sparks. Stewart. I think. Oh yeah. Uh, See, yeah, Stewart went to you. Uh, no, no, See, no, these no, are, no, that was years ago. Never no, mind. INSU, INSU, so New York point. Liberty, and this, this, there you go. This is what, but this is what I am saying. Well, you better is, take notice, then. Well, we well, that's what I'm hoping that what she will do to have more people take notice. We that, got to because you've had these great players like Sue Bird, for instance. I can tell you she played for Connecticut, but who'd she play for in the WNBA? Uh, Seattle yeah, right? Storm. Look at you guys. <laughs> well, I'm on, I'm on well play I played for Seattle. I, I, don't I played for Seattle. Yeah, you're, you're banned. But, you but, yeah. but I was a guy. I was a kid. I watched everything. Especially, I remember. I watched first, Australian I remember rules the, football. I remember the hey. first. I, me too. I remember the first attempts, though, of the WNBA. Um, the leagues that didn't last. They only lasted a year. And yeah. then, boom, the WNBA happened in 1998, the year I got drafted to Seattle. So there were a few attempts. So just like the USFL is now. Uh, with the XFL or now the UFL, yeah. same Rock with that. It was it was a, a slow start because yeah. why you got to promote like crazy, like especially today. Back then it was a thing, but especially today, right? If a league, if a new program, and we see it with movies, right? We see all the teasers from a year ago and building up to the summer months that are right around the corner of all these movies that's about to hit. So just like that, you got to advertise, advertise, yep. promote. Um, get their best athletes out in front of everybody. If it's commercials, if it's events in the towns, that's what the NFL, I've come from that, right? So I understand that to grow something, you got to let everybody on Front Street know who you are, what you are, who the players are. Because I was just talking out about this with my assistant coach out in Columbus, is that we got to start doing events where we invite all the local high schools to play with our players or just meet our players on campus. You know, get to know Nebraska esports players face-to-face first then we could get that that fan base behind us. Because if they don't know who they're cheering for, yeah, they might know the games. They're like, oh, yeah, I play that game. I play Overwatch or I play Rock League. But if they don't know our team players who are behind them and, and supporting, I say they're supporting them behind them, then they don't, it would be hard to support. So that's what the same thing WNBA is learning and what most leagues have to do is you got to promote the best, your best players, and then it grows from there. And I think a big part, and this goes into, Raph, when you brought up the crowds and the viewership for Indiana and just the mm-hmm. league as a whole, it takes a collective effort, right, to get from point A to point B. All these names we mentioned, Bird, Tarasi, Griner, Deladon, I mean, all these players, Brianna Stewart, Inescu, that have just, like we mentioned, paved the way. Now, you take all these names that we know, you combine that into one, and that's the popularity of Caitlin Clark. So you're starting to see everything come together. Now, I'll say this about attendance. She brought in as many people as she did in the middle of Iowa. Oh, yeah. Iowa City, is, it's a college town. Look at all the people that came to the tournament, and those were in big cities. She's in Indianapolis. Yeah. And with the popularity, and I think people see the hope she can bring to the game and the attention, I do not think they will have any attendance problems in the slightest. And this goes for the Sparks, too. I think in L.A., Cameron Brink, that's where a lot of people say she's going to go. Mm-hmm. They have the second overall pick. Yeah. There is a lot of talent within these first 10 picks, really probably the whole first round. And I think you're going to see a lot of good things come with the fever and other teams are going to follow because they realize each team at this point, whether you're a veteran or a rookie, is going to have some sort of star player on your team. You will. And I think, I don't know, I think for a lot of girls growing up and guys, they're going to have somebody to look up to in their town other than the NBA players. Yep. 
So real quick, to I'll say before I jump to the chat, Chris, you got homework to do. Get some dumb WNBA now. Oh, yeah, I'm on it now. You got that? All right, from the chat, we had uh, Tommy says, Maya Moore, Candace Parker, like we mentioned, yep. have been marking it have been marking it better. Uh, they've had talent over the years. Caitlin Clark could be the villain that helps push things forward. You know, being the rivalries from around the uh, college level, right, with her and uh, Angel Reese with LSU and mm -hmm. just that whole mix of games from two years ago, from last year to then this year, where they eliminated them and stuff like that. So you have that coming up, right? But both going to get drafted. Angel is going to get drafted somewhere. Yeah. We already know where Caitlin's going. So if they're in the same division, Either it doesn't matter division or not. If they're just if they just play, each they're other. gonna play. We know they're gonna play each other. They're gonna be you know Angel's gonna be somewhere. Um, Caitlin's gonna be in, in 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 Indiana. So we know that matchup is coming. So there's the Larry Bird versus exactly. Magic. There's yep. the mm -hmm. Michael Jordan versus Magic or Michael Jordan versus the Detroit Pistons or Joe Dumars or Isaiah Thomas um, conflict. And that's what got those games right going to national. I mean that got me going. So when I was. We had just moved back from Los Angeles in 1991. That summer, the NBA playoffs, or when I got moved in back here as a kid, living with my sister, my mom was getting back, you know, we're moving stuff. And I remember turning on the TV, and that was the NBA finals of Michael Jordan versus Magic Johnson. And I watched that entire series. And I believe they either went, you can look it up. I'm, I'm just going to go off memory right now, but look it up. I think. Chicago won four, you know, was it best of seven? So four games. Oh, they took uh four out of five. Well, you took four out yep. of five. And, but you knew after like game three, Chicago, like game two, I think it was Chicago got this. And I'm sitting there at 13, 14 years old. And I'm like, yeah, this is game over. I'm about to see Michael Jordan win his first world championship. And so that right there, where you're going to have young ladies now watching that. And that's, that's awesome to now have that you know point. It took years of hard work, dedication, Everybody behind WNBA, everybody behind these athletes that we, the young women that we see now playing is going on. And now we got it. We got that parody, which I love. So it's going to be awesome. And that's how you get them on. And you do your homework. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just messing with you a little bit. A little no, bit. you're not. No. Yeah. I, 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 all I'm saying is there's been so much talent that's came out of college basketball. Yeah. Yes. The Connecticut, lot. the LSUs, the stuff like that. But they've got to the WNBA and just, or a lot of the masses, the crowd, you look at the crowds. It, it hasn't like can I it mean, will, it will. continue. There's still there's still star basketball players. I understand that, but they need that one person, the Caitlin Clark, it will. the one yeah. like she will being on Saturday yes. Night Live. I agree. Instance. There there hasn't been maybe Maya no. Moore, but no. maybe but so she's that. I think she's that person. I think that's the one in, and that's the one that WNB is gonna really jump on her back and write her because she definitely is. Um, she can handle it. Yep, and she's she definitely that away. person that can put the WNBA really on the map more than. Almost like, you know, like you look at the UFL now. They, they need something. To eat. St. Louis is great. They fill it up every yes. game. But all these rest of these teams are going to have to find something to, you know, to grab. So, all right. Well, let's throw it to break now. This is The Drive, 93.7, the ticket. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Grab a free burger and beer at L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John L.A. autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. At Doan University, we build leaders, and that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours, and our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. 
Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. It seems like just the other day I was building my first house. I've seen many changes to our building market in Lincoln. It's been a fun road. Bob Benish is the founder and president of Aspen Builders, online at aspenbuildersinc.com. You know, we hear this a lot where I don't want to live in a cookie cutter home. Well, let's come up with some answers on what we're going to build, where we're going to build it, and what it's going to cost. One thing that we started doing early on was we started building neighborhoods. I'm a firm believer in character in your street and in your neighborhood. I like choice. I like variation. I like maybe something a little bit different in a neighborhood that you don't see in every neighborhood. I think it's great to have choices, it's uniqueness, and I think that's what gives a neighborhood character. And I think that's what we've done over the years. Make your dream home a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. Nutrition Authority invites you to save 35 to 75% off at the Spring Mega Sale. We're taking our better than internet prices and cutting them even deeper, bringing you the biggest sale of the season. Monday, April 15th through Saturday, April 20th, the Spring Mega Sale is on at Nutrition Authority. For location information, check us out at mynutritionauthority.com. You can get diesel anywhere, but what about atomic diesel? That comes from Stern. Atomic Diesel is your solution to all your cold weather problems. Prevent clogged fuel filters, increase your fuel economy, and save money with Atomic Diesel. Contact Roger at Stern today by calling 1-800-477-2744 to see how Atomic Diesel and the rest of their line of fuels and lubricants can keep your operation running at max capacity. Alexa. Play 93.7 The Ticket. Okay, playing 93.7 The Ticket. Alexa, turn down the lights. Dimming the lights. Alexa, order a pizza. The big one. All the toppings. Are you sure that's a good idea? Alexa. That's a lot of pizza for just one man. Alexa, just do it. Stop judging me, just do it. As you wish. Thanks, Alexa. You're my best friend. Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. This is Coach Bill Bush. You all know my passion for Nebraska. Having coached all over the country, I can honestly say there is no place like Nebraska. You know where there's also no place like? Midwest Bank. Midwest Bank has proudly served Nebraska for over 70 years, and they're located in nine different communities. Midwest Bank is ready, willing, and able to meet all your personal, business, and agriculture needs. Your community, your bank, and mine, Midwest Bank. Find out more at Midwest Bank. Member FDIC. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Cobble Chevrolet GMC, and our annual spring sales event is now underway. We have absolutely huge savings right now at Cobble. New Sierras and new Silverados have a double whammy. Choose from APR starting at 1.9% or discounts over 9,000. Yes, that's right, 1.9% APR or discounts of over 9,000. So please take that short money-saving drive down 144th Street just south of the interstate or check us out online at CobbleCars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with approved credit old school with dp and j so i knew that it was a crap shoot with the grown-up professional at the highest level who's gonna bet i don't know whether the starting center's girlfriend broke up with him whether his parents have have groceries that week i don't know whether his roommate and him had a fight so why would I, one, why would I want to bet on that? Uh, 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves. And we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to The Drive with A.D., Raph, and Amon Gray on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, everybody, we are back again. This is The Drive on 93.7 The Ticket. This segment is proudly sponsored by Florio's Italian Restaurant and Grill, just south of Lincoln Southwest High School on 14th and Pine Lake Road. 
Royals Italian Restaurant provides a cozy, family-friendly setting where good food and good company come together. All you have to do is visit floriallsne.com or call 402-423-5576 to make reservations or place takeout orders. And before we get to talking about Nebraska football, i got to bring this up. Did you guys happen to get a chance to watch UFC 300 on, yes. Yes, on I did. Saturday night? Yes, I was able to do that, that with my team after um, we watched the grand finals and most of the big events from Valorant to Overwatch and stuff. But yes, we caught it. We caught some of the tickets. The, the Holloway. The undercard matches, I'll say. The Holloway gate, 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 G fight. Insane. Insane. It was, it was a good fight. It gets to, gets to the very ending. There's probably about mm, 15, 15, 10 seconds left in the fight. And Holloway points to the middle of the ring and says, get out here. And they both go to the middle of the ring and just start throwing haymakers left and right, <laughs> back and forth. And with one second left, Holloway knocks him out with one second left. <laughs> Missed that part. It was insane. And we saw the early matches. We saw the undercar matches. and some Undercards were there. really good. They were really good mm-hmm. fights. A little good brawls. A couple... Maybe one submission. It was one choke out. Yep, yep. Yeah, we saw that. But we were in Dave and Buster's, bro. So, and we we're gamers. And when Dave, no, we had to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. They. <laughs> it was a really. It was a really good for for a three hundred. You know, you want to have like your your best. You know, for three hundred because you know one hundred, two hundred, three. It was a great card. Every fight was really good. So it was it was a fun night of. And I got to watch my buddy Jeremy and. He is he is a jujitsu king of the world, and okay. he knows all. Like I watch fighting, and I'm like, yeah, throw punches, hit, knock down, choke out, whatever. But Jeremy is like, step into that, step into that, get out of it, you know, with using your arms and stuff and techniques. It was so it was, it was fun watching with him just to to hear his knowledge of of jujitsu and stuff oh, like breaking that. into so. somebody that has the the insight of why yeah it was it was it, it's like punch was thrown and why or, or not thrown or whatever it's like nice. watching like like i thought i used to watch basketball like i thought i understood basketball and then i watched a game with strickland and i'm like and yeah i'm not watching basketball like i thought i watched basketball. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah, that's any sport. And that was like UFC. It was like watching watching with Jeremy. I was like, yep, I what I've been watching over the last 20 years, I've just been, yeah, no clue. But they'd have him like a submission, and he'd be like, step out, step out, put your, you know, I'm like, what? Yeah, you can. Yep. So it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was it it was was it was fun to watch. So that was that was a good night of UFC 300. So they got they got some good fights down the line. Dana White, yeah, Dana White announced after the fight that um, – Connor McGregor will be returning to the ring here in the next couple of months. Yeah. So Connor will be back. Yeah. Not too high on it, Amon. Nah. Connor. <laughs> Connor. Just keep him in the movie. So he could do another remake of uh some eighties or nineties movie like he did with the Roadhouse. Roadhouse. He could do a Roadhouse. He could go do that. I don't want to see him in the ring. Were you ever in any movies? Yes, I was in two. Um Big Stan with Rob Snyder. The You can do it. From Waterboy and all yep, that. Yep. And then uh, actually three, three, two indies. Well, one indie, then Big Stan. Um, Chester McPhail, which was the indie film. A friend of mine who's a movie director in Wisconsin asked me to be a do a cameo so I could real easy be myself. And then uh, the big one, for me anyway, because I'm a Batman fan. So Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, the director's cut. Because at the time, Warner Brothers... Was not going to uh, fran- uh, they weren't going to fund a four hour w- oh, superhero yeah, I movie. That. Yeah, so they cut my scene and a lot of scenes from Zack Snyder's cut, and that's why you have Zack Snyder's version of Justice League that was a four hour movie because that one also got cut. Oh. Yeah, so I'm in a quick scene. I'm I'm quick. It's a quick scene. Serious. You if you go like that, you miss me. But you, you, but a, you're there, you're I'm there. there, so I'm a. Uh, I, I I help. You ever watch YouTube and see the YouTube? Uh, he was like a, when he hit it was a uh, CT Fletcher. So he was in the scene with me, and CT hand me the shank, or I handed CT the shank, the mm-hmm. shank, the one guy that was like working for Batman. That was like an informant because he had he got branded with the Batman symbol on his shoulder, and so everybody in the jail was like thinking that he was a. A, a, a informant for Batman, Bruce Wayne, and so they had to take him out. We took him out. Nice. So that was my role. Movie star. Yeah. So wow. that, that was my wish come true. I did an interview back in 05 for when I was doing radio in Milwaukee, 
And I said in that conversation with that, we talk Batman like every other episode. And I said, you know what? If I was ever be a day where I could be a fly on the wall in a film that, I mean, I don't have to have no lines. I just want to be on set. So I was able to be on set and have a few, have a, have a, have a scene, no lines. I did have seen when I actually were uh, auditioned for it. I had lines, but the lines, they x all that out and then eventually x out the clip. But it was on, if you go, if you have went to Best Buy or you bought the DVD or you download it now as digital, you download the director's edition of Batman vs. Superman. I am on that one. I am in that. Boom. So, wow. So, yeah. So yeah, movie I have star in studio. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I was on one Red Bull commercial, and that was it. Really? Nope. Nice. Yep. What was your what was your role? I was the doorman. People were like checking into like the club or whatever, so I was dressed in oh. a black suit. Oh, nice. The muscle. It was quick nice. though. It was like boop boop. Yeah. And I was, See? Yeah. Commercial. IMDb. What's up now, yeah. people? Hey, hey, hey! That little fifteen seconds, two and a half. It doesn't matter. Nope. You're in it. But I, my movie, my movie star career will start later here in the, the next couple of years. I think I'll probably start starring in some. some there you stuff. go. Yeah. Can I? Be, I just want to be on set. Yeah. I don't have to come on down. Movie. Live remote from yeah. the set. <laughs> I was like, hey, you got a guest uh, coming. You got a guest here. You got some guy here waiting for you. How about uh, a little Husker football? Right? Husker football. Yes, yes indeedy. They Pull scrimmaged on Saturday. Ooh. Ooh, how'd that go? It has been very like not not a ton coming out. From news wise, it was a close scrimmage. So the sipsters of the world and stuff that really, really no one really knows. Hmm. But I mean, first scrimmage, it's it's like hit or miss because usually defense is there first. Because being on defense, flying around, making plays, calling formations out, getting your plays in from the DC and then the middle linebacker, strong safety, whoever spouts out. It's a lot quicker. They everything processed a lot faster for a defender. So usually the defense wins, or it looks like they're winning in the first couple of scrimmages and the plays. Offense, obviously, we got all the big adjustments on this team here, right? From quarterback to running backs, um, all line big changes there. Just people graduating, and moving on. Um, that's where you saw the um, the differences at. Yep. And usually the second scrimmage is where we offense was kind of the victor, or we played better because yep. then we got all the new plays. We're not thinking as much. So it's defense, you know, nine times out of ten, and nine, nine out of ten plays, you don't have to think. You just see ball, hit ball. Yep. And that's where they would look like most like they're winning drills. They're winning. The, and we, of course, hearing it from our guys, they would give us the business. So um, I'm pretty sure in the locker even though we didn't get nothing media wise, I'm pretty sure in that locker room. Oh, yeah. It gets interesting. Oh, definitely. Because definitely. it's competitive. And my Matt rule is building that, cultivating that competitive nature in that locker room because they want to win. And so they got to win one against each other first now in spring ball, and then eventually flip that over in the fall yep. when they get to the Big Ten play and playing the teams that are on their schedule. That same competitiveness that they had against their own teammates then has to filter out to redirect it onto any team coming in, into Memorial Stadium and any team, when they go on the road, they got to feel that. They got to And physically, not just verbally, go yep. out there and play ball. And then the bigger news that came out of Lincoln this weekend is – Jackson Carpenter from Lincoln Southwest committed to Nebraska, 6'2", 185, an athlete receiver type type player, Tim Carpenter's son. I was just about to say, is that Timmy's boy? That is. And then oh. we also got a speed demon from Mays, Kansas, Bryson Hayes. He's a wide receiver, and he can absolutely fly. He's nice. fat. He is fast. So got a couple of potential receivers, I would assume, with – with Jackson, 6'2", 185, I would think probably a receiver, but being that his dad played tight end for Nebraska, it would not surprise me in the least that maybe you see him, maybe a future tight end, you know, maybe in the making. So with that kind of speed, and then right. you, you could get him up to 6'2", 220, he might be, you know, a tight end candidate. So yeah, that's a nice little combination of athlete right there. When you have that, yeah, you could toy around. You could test them out. See what his wide receiver skills is first, and or putting down on the uh, tight end position. Just the biggest question out of that is like, what's his blocking like? If he's gonna be a tight end, you gotta block. Um, better tight ends in the league like Kettle, like Kelsey, somewhat. But Kettle, he when you watch him, he's an all around tight end. Yep. Um, that's why he has a shoulder brace because he's putting in that work. He's probably paying for it a little bit, but he's putting in that effort. And knowing Shanahan, he's gonna make sure if you're on offense, you're gonna block. And that's why. Anybody in that backfield, 
Um, Christian McCaffrey right now is benefiting from those guys getting down the field. So having a size athlete like Carpenter is, just test him out once he gets here. Once he gets in that locker room, gets yeah. on that field, Matt, the tight ends coach, can then say, all right, we could test him out first couple of days of the week of training camp. Let's try it here for a couple of days, then we'll switch him over the next couple of days. And then on Friday or Saturday, whenever that practice starts, then all right, what's the evaluation? What, is, what did he do better at? He did better at running wide yep. receiver routes off the – off the split, um, inside, and or was he good at blocking at the tight end and coming out and running routes from that position too? Yep. Then you make the decision. And it really is, you set him down and be like, hey, this is what we evaluated, you asked. Yep. We, we looked at the film. We watched you practice for the next, for the last five days, and we saw these uh, details at wide receiver for you. We saw these details at tight end. But what do you feel that you feel that you want to yep. go in and fit in? So have that conversation with him then because talent like that, you don't want to mess up. You want to make sure you put him in the right spot. Yep, and then Bryson Hayes, um, as a sophomore, ran a 10.75, nice. 100, and his, stati- his statistics are crazy, too. He had, like, 79 catches for 1,500 yards and 18 touchdowns Ooh. last year. So I know that Kansas State was going after him hard. I know Kansas was going after going after him, uh, Jackson Carpenter hard also. So right, we, we went by hen- enemy lines. So yeah, snatch one going up. down into Kansas. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. You got to snatch up the top. You have the top 10 in every state, or I say top five in every state, well, usually top five, usually in every state is going to that state school or that, that dominant state school. But if you get the bottom six or the five, the six through 10, you snatch one of those, you're doing good from yep. an opposing school. And like us going to Kansas, I mean, we don't know where he was ranked in their area, or you might've said it, I missed it, but he's definitely for his speed and talent, I would assume yep. he's top 10. Yep. So if he was five, he was number four, nine, nine in the state. There you go. If you could get the nine, like that was, I remember Coach Osborne mentioned that. I remember talking to some other coaches too that we say from other states, if we're not worried about the top five guys from the other states. Other states, they're going to probably go to their state college, that school. Texas, they're going to go to UT or or Houston or somewhere like that. But if the bottom six through 10 or six through 15, we're going to go for those players and make sure we get them here. So, And then before we throw it to break, I want to do a Ralph's Good Take real quick. Mm. So today's... Oh, nice. Yeah, today's Raf's good take goes out to Vern Lundquist. Vern Lundquist uh, was play-by-play guy for SEC on CBS for several years. Uh, yesterday was his 40th Masters. He works number 16. He's um, known for the call back when Tiger Woods made the putt back in, oh, man, 2001. Five. Five. Man, okay. almost 20 years ago. Wow. But um, Vern re- is retiring after 40 years. It was pretty cool. After Tiger finished 16 yesterday, he walked over. Yeah, he shook, did. Shook, hands with Vern Lundquist, shook hands with Vern Lundquist. So nope. that's my Ralph's good take. Um, it's You have voices that are synonymous, I think, you know, growing up, your childhood oh, yeah. and stuff. And Vern Lundquist is one of those. Every time you hear SEC on CBS, you always think Vern Lundquist, big game. So <laughs> Vern Lundquist, you are Ralph's good take. <laughs> Boom. And we will... So what to break? This is the drive, 93.7, the ticket. You can get diesel anywhere, but what about atomic diesel? That comes from Stern. Atomic Diesel is your solution to all your cold weather problems. Prevent clogged fuel filters, increase your fuel economy, and save money with Atomic Diesel. Contact Roger at Stern today by calling 1-800-477-2744 to see how Atomic Diesel and the rest of their line of fuels and lubricants can keep your operation running at max capacity. You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place to. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Hi, it's Charlie Stone back with the latest update from Andy Goodyear of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, your new car selection keeps getting better and better every month. Can you tell our listeners all about it? You know, it sure is, Charlie. It's great that our customers can come in, pick out a new Honda, and drive away with it that day. How many new Hondas do you have in stock? Well, right now we have just about 100 in stock. 
Hey, I hear you've won some very important awards in your service department. Tell us about them. Well, the first one is we won the award for the first fixed award. So the cars are actually fixed on the very first time they're brought in. Second award is our customer service experience award. And then our third award is our Honda Express Service Elite. And we rank the best in quality and customer satisfaction. Maybe it's time you come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business. 27th and Yankee Hill Road or online at HondaOfLincoln.com. Tanner's Bar and Grill is the perfect place to watch your favorite MLB teams this spring and summer, as well as Nebraska baseball. Enjoy Tanner's delicious hamburgers, chicken lips, and daily specials. And wash it down with one of their tons of options of beers. You'll never have an issue finding the game as there are TVs everywhere throughout the space. So get in early and grab your spot and settle in for an afternoon or evening of baseball at Tanner's Bar and Grill, 30th and Yankee Hill. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Cobble Chevrolet GMC, and our annual spring sales event is now underway. We have absolutely huge savings right now at Cobble. New Sierras and new Silverados have a double whammy. Choose from APR starting at 1.9% or discounts over 9000 Yes, that's right, 1.9% APR or discounts of over 9000 So please take that short money-saving drive down 144th Street just south of the interstate or check us out online at coppelcars.com you'll be glad you did all deals with approved credit are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene the electrical workers of local union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits call mike at 402-875-1034 to apply start your electrical career today 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather, sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, mainly sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. Then a chance of showers and storms late. See a high around 83. Tonight, showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe. See a low near 63. And tomorrow, more showers, potentially storms likely, the high around 73. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clark for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Nutrition Authority invites you to save 35 to 75% off at the Spring Mega Sale. We're taking our better than internet prices and cutting them even deeper, bringing you the biggest sale of the season. Monday, April 15th through Saturday, April 20th, the Spring Mega Sale is on at Nutrition Authority. For location information, check us out at MyNutritionAuthority.com. Problem gambling affects millions of Americans daily, of all ages and walks of life. If your loved one is struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24-hour helpline at 402-476-2300. That's 402-476-2300. Zero, zero. On the block with Strick and Austin. When you're when you're a New York Nick in New York, I mean you're talking about you see mafioso types. <laughs> you go into a restaurant and you would literally eat. Hey, come on over here. You know they they you know I don't know how to say it. I don't got the accent, but they would say, "Come, come, Strick, come on, come over, have a drink on me." And what are you gonna do? Say no? You do not say you no. Don't say no to the drink. <laughs> you don't say no. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Early break with Sip and Jake. I called. You didn't return the call. Oh, yeah. Called a couple times yesterday. No, nothing. Uh, I, but I did trickets. Uh, hold it. I called Trick first. It. And then I got this. I don't know where Sip was. If you're in the bathroom, <laughs> I get the. He goes, he has to go. He goes, hey, hang tight. I'm writing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I'm like, well, why are you whispering to me? He said it just like that. Hey, uh, sit tight on that one. I'm, uh, I'm writing right now. And I'm like, what is he doing? Can you in the bathroom or what? Where are you at? Just the, the scoop where, of what happened. Yeah, there, where Sip. were you when I called you? Because I did call you back. <laughs> Hang tight. That was Hang tight. I'm, I'm ready. Early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to the drive with AD, Raph, and Amon Green on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, we're back here on the drive on 93.7 The Ticket. Myself, 
Got the black shirt, T Far up in the house, the real Farley and Josh on the ones and twos. Raph at the scoot a little bit, get some work done. Or going early. What's up, T? Good morning, guys. Hi, Mr. Mr. Farley. How you doing? Man? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Great morning. <laughs> It's been a fun morning. Uh, yeah, fun morning. <laughs> so what are you guys been? I, I didn't listen because I was kind of busy. I usually listen to y'all show on the way down. So yeah. I usually just try not to bite what y'all say. So I just listen to each <laughs> show in the morning. <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase, bite. But today I was just running kind of late and just doing things, trying to get the dogs settled. And Good yeah. weekend. Yep, yep. I had a good weekend out in Columbus with my players. So it was all fun, fun and games. Learned How did y'all do? We did okay. We we didn't get where you know we wanted to. We didn't get to the bid, or we didn't win everything. But we did obviously have learning lessons because we have a young squad, and obviously that didn't mean nothing. They made it there. We have a couple sophomores. We have a couple seniors graduating out, and we have three more freshmen that's going to be. So we have sophomores and juniors. So juniors and sophomores next year for the Smash Brothers team, and then around the horn for all our teams, we have young teams. Players from Overwatch, the Valorant, and uh, Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty is our oldest team, actually. So we'll be moving on some players there for graduation. But super excited about next year, um, this fall, next year, mm. 2025. Yep. Yeah, and it's a couple big days here in the sports world, right? You mentioned the Masters finishes up yesterday. WNBA yep. draft is tonight, tonight. the much-anticipated WNBA draft. It's Jackie Robinson week in the MLB. I don't know which day. They're going to all wear 42, but today is the day that he made his It might debut. be today. We'll see. I mean, you could look it up real quick. But, yeah, most likely today. I mean, remember, uh, like I said, during our show, Josh, uh, 2002, I went to that All-Star game. Mm -hmm. and was in left field stands watching. And the cool thing, I think that's that's when they started. I believe that's when they started wearing his number for the All-Star game. And so everybody had 42 on. But then that was the first tie that happened in Major League Baseball All-Star game history. And then C-Lick from that tie next year said all right we're gonna not have no more ties so whoever wins whatever conference wins is that that conference has home field advantage and that's how it carried on from there from 2002 to now so it's about 22 years ago basically yeah. so i kind of want to go back to the WNBA draft here really quickly they're going to allow fans it's a big part of the game you're starting to see these certain aspects you know bleeding from what clayton caitlin clark did in the college landscape mm -hmm. now into the professional world what do you guys envision in those first few weeks of the WNBA where you have her facing off against these other talented rookies and going up against these big name veterans? Well, it's like being a rookie in an NFL. You're just yep. another number and a guy or a person. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, it, you know what, the, the WNBA has stars already. So, you know, adding another star, she probably have to wait her turn because, you know, it's, there's still a lot of great women that can play basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if Caitlin Clark ever been dunked on, but it's it's still women that can dunk in the NBA. So, you know, I mean, the transition probably be easier for her because she's a pure shooter, but she's going to face a lot of great players that can do things that she can do. And and, and really, is, it, it'll make the game better for, for everyone, though. Yeah, she's so going to have the defense a little bit more tighter and more strategy-wise in terms of being full team defenses, not just a single pair trying to stick on her because I saw the final two few games, the playoff or, you know, NCAA bracket games for her where they had players trying to just play her up straight up one-on-one. -on -one, and that's not a good thing. You got to have a double come over every now and then to throw off the timing of her shot and her getting to her step back, right? She's trying to create space to get to her step back to hit the three. So the WNBA players and coaches are already going to know that. If I've seen it and I'm just a fan, I'm pretty sure they understand it and they're going to D up rotate uh, double teams from side to side of the court, making sure when she comes into that logo area or even by the three-point line, they're going to have pop bodies there for her and be physical at the same time. Now, I'll also say this in regards to Caitlin Clark. I'm interested to see in her response of when she's in the game and she's not involved or maybe struggling a little bit because I felt like at Iowa, when she wasn't getting points, if you watch late in the national championship, she'd either stand around or take probably not the best shots yeah you get palms up reactions especially at the end of games if it's not going as well planned is that something you guys are also looking for do you feel like she will kind of you know make that adjustment in that area if she if i see that then that means the coach is not doing their job mm -hmm. because the coach won't go for that a coach is going to go for i want to see you moving without the ball i want you i want to see you then transition over to defense and just be ready for when the ball comes your way. That's it. I don't want to see you, you know, throwing your hands away. Oh, why you didn't throw me the ball at this moment? 
you know, until you gain your street street credit, when you get a year or two under your belt to do that, that first rookie year, can't, you're not in that area yet, even though you're a phenomenal player at the college level. So you got to earn that first. And then once you earn it, then you could be mad and then give, give feedback on timeouts. So when you come to the sideline, make adjustments, make sure you let your coach know and you let your teammate know too that, hey, I was open. You could have hit me with the ball there on my, and would have got to my shot real fast. Just you got to earn that first. She's not going to get that right out the box. Yeah, I think that was probably just a, a college thing. You know, I think she would probably know better, you know, to run without the ball. Um, I think coaches let their superstars do that in college. She was, yeah. you know, I just so. being with her coach for four years or five, how many years she's been there, I think it, you know, the coach probably got comfortable with letting her do it. So, you know, it's something, she, just a habit she has to drop once she get in the pros. Yeah, because it'll get it'll get nipped in the butt real fast Yeah, mm-hmm. from, pro, from pro coaches to college coaches or pro teams. Because if the coach doesn't do it, the locker room going to do it. Yeah, the ladies we got to come up. Hey, hey, girl, we got to talk. Um, don't be getting, don't be getting all, you know, frustrated. Or if the, I don't want to see them hands going up in here. I'm gonna get you the ball. Just we got to run the scheme. You know, we had this play going on. So, you know, because that was I never went down that road, but I've overheard conversation of teammates when I've been in the locker room. Guys coming in having little, as we say, baby fits on why they didn't get the ball. The play didn't come their way, and then. The old linemen have to come. So you, you see an old line come up. Hey, man, you need to uh, pump your brakes. Mm-hmm. Hey, we need to get that block secure because this happened on that. So we're going to protect you, but don't you don't want your old lineman mad at you. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, you don't want that to happen. That's how we eat as running backs, bro. Um, so some of my teammates that were complaining that the old line wasn't blocking properly. So it's like, uh, you don't do that. So again, for the for young players, for not just Caitlin, for any of the ladies, Angel Reese, other players, uh, Krim, um, Cameron from uh, Stanford too. All of them, and I'm pretty sure they're level-headed. But understand that. Look, you're gonna have to go through the ringer, earn your street cred points first before you can ask or demand for anything on the court or even in the locker room. It's about checking the ego at the door. Basically, team player all day, every day. All right, well, great show today. Again, yep. WNBA draft tonight. Scotty Scheffler wins the Masters yesterday, and mm. well, finally, we'll throw it over to you and uh, Vershawn and Bach for the captain. That's right. That's some fun. The fastest two hours in radio is on the way. Air, put some earplugs in because Fashan's always screaming. <laughs> <laughs> He's always loud. Yeah, this has been The Drive. That's a lie. With Raf, AD, and Amon Green to the captain. Next on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com.